Hello, I'm Luke O'Neill and here I am in my lab in the Trinity Biomedical Sciences Institute. So this week on my COVID-19 update, transmission, it's a word we're all getting very familiar with. What it means is spread of the virus. And the big question is, can the vaccines stop you spreading the virus? There's good news actually, two studies, AstraZeneca and also Moderna have shown there's a good chance their vaccines are stopping spread. Moderna did a thing in Boston actually, quite a controlled experiment, vaccinated loads of people and then measured the virus up their noses and there was a lot less virus in the vaccinated people, which means they're not getting infected and spreading it. AstraZeneca as well did a big trial, they took swabs, reckon 50% decrease in transmission with that vaccine. So the evidence grows that these vaccines do stop spread. More work needs to be done though to confirm this. And finally, Sinovac, the Chinese company, in a place called Serana in Brazil. They vaccinated the entire town of Serana. 30,000 people have now been vaccinated. And of course they're wondering, will that completely eliminate the virus and get herd immunity? It's like a controlled experiment again to see if herd immunity might be real. We're waiting for these results because if that turns out to be true, that's a great vaccine as well. So the evidence that these vaccines do two things, they stop you getting sick, obviously. But secondly, if they stop spread, that really means we have the virus on the run. And another question we've looked at over the months is super spreaders. Is it super spreaders that are spreading this infection? One year's data now, remember, we have on this virus and the evidence grew and grew. 10% of people are responsible for 80% of the spread of this virus. That's a very important thing to study. And the question is what makes you a super spreader? Well, strangely, uh, mild symptoms is a feature, and that means your immune system hasn't really kicked off. The virus is in your nose, and now you're spreading it, and you're more likely to spread it if you have a weaker immune response to the virus. That's one thing. Uh, the second thing is shouting and singing definitely is super spreading, because if you shout, you get around 50 times more virus coming out of your mouth if you shout at someone. If you sing, it's 99 times. So these are clearly the events that allow this virus to spread, and that's a very important question to try to find out why. And of course, indoors is where it happens mainly, because it's a confined space, and loads of studies have shown this. One rather disturbing one in Belgium was a single person infected 140 people in a nursing home, 26 people died in response to that single person, unbeknownst to them, because they had very, very mild symptoms. So of course, now that we know super spreading is the big danger, the great thing would be, again, using things like antigen testing to figure out who has some virus in their nose, because they're the ones who are gonna be infectious. And another big question we've had for a number of months now is genetics. In other words, are you carrying genes in your body variants of genes we call them at a higher risk of getting disease, a higher risk of severe disease or that are protective and there's more and more evidence to say yes to that. And a very interesting discovery this week is Neanderthals. Now Neanderthals were another type of hominid like us humans and it turns out around about 50,000 years ago we indeed interbred with them. And guess what? Some of the genes we picked up off Neanderthals link into COVID-19. They found two stretches of genes. If you have one stretch, it gives you a higher risk of getting severe disease, and that's obviously a worry. And the question is, what's in that stretch? Some of these immune proteins are in that stretch and they go into overdrive and then make you very, very sick. So there's one little stretch that we're studying in great detail. But a second stretch actually protects you. And that second stretch decreases your risk of COVID by 22%, which is quite significant. A big study has confirmed that. What's in that stretch is very interesting. That helps your immune system target RNA viruses. And of course, SARS-CoV-2 is an RNA virus. And that means this stretch also protects you from hepatitis C and Ebola, that's been shown as well. It's as if your immune system has a special component that we inherited from Neanderthals to kill these RNA viruses. So again, these are very useful studies because you can predict then who might be at risk of severe disease and treat them, and maybe even target the little pieces that are from the Neanderthal to limit that infection and that severity of disease. And secondly, if we know what makes you likely to be healthy, you could probably boost that part in some way or give it as a, even a, a kind of a med medicinal approach, I guess. So working on Neanderthals and Neanderthal DNA, surprisingly, has given us huge new insights into COVID-19. So you can hear about these stories and more on my weekly COVID-19 update with Pat Kenny on Newstalk.